Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is plea number two of Tubal Cain Needs Help with a Pole Gear Speed Reducer. Now, if you did not watch this first video, you will not know what I'm talking about. So either turn the video off or go and watch this one. But about 15,000 people uh, did watch it, and I had hundreds and hundreds of comments. I wasn't able to answer all of them, and I won't answer all of them here. But this will be a continuation of what I've done so far, and uh, asking for help. I think I know what to do, but it's great to get people involved. I was surprised how many people do like to get involved. But don't give me answers if you don't really have answers. And I've been involved with the rebuild of this for three or four weeks, so I did get sidetracked, and this was an overwhelming job. Uh, I made eight, eight videos in all. They're not all released yet, but... Getting back to this, what I finally did upon suggestions and what my neighbor and I decided on even before I made the plea was that uh, I wanted to separate the unit here. Now, again, this is a pull gear. That's the brand name. I better explain that. Pull gear speed reducer, 7 to 1, planetary. It mounts directly on the motor allows you to reduce the speed of a drill press or bandsaw or other machine by a 1 to 7 ratio and also just by pulling and uh, or pushing or whatever you call it on that little uh, lever you're back to direct drive whatever the motor speed is so anyway using a bearing splitter and a puller and there will be a video on, on this. If I'm successful and get this thing going, there'll be a several part video on the rebuilding, which has nothing to do with these temporary uh, videos that I'm making right now. But I was able to separate the pulley from the gear cluster here. You see how that goes together. And there was a bearing on the bottom. Now again, the reason I'm taking this apart is because there's three bad bearings. And there's a uh, number one bearing. Very, very rough. It does turn, but and I think there were shields or seals on there at one time, long gone. Yes, it's very beat up. That's the way I got it, even with a hole in the shiv there. A ring gear, and the ring gear, by the way, is brass. So there's really nothing more that I'm going to do to this piece other than clean it up. But I have to change two more bearings. The bearing that you see right here, and then... There's another ball bearing down in here that you can't really see, even with a flashlight. I don't believe you're going to be able to see that. And of course they're pressed in. Now there is no way to pull this off. We can't pull it off because of the shoulder here. So here's what I'm requesting in this video. What should I do now? I am assuming I need to press now from this side. But in order to press from this side, and I had a lot of uh, answers from people that have had these apart, but this plunger here has to come out, I believe. And as far as I can tell, it's just peened over. So I believe I'm going to have to cut the shaft and uh, eventually make a new plunger rod. So that, in other words, this is out of the way, and then press from this direction to get the rest of it apart. Surprisingly, there's very little wear on the gears, and it was not very dirty in here at all. I expected there to be a lot of debris, but, but there wasn't much. A little dirty grease, like you see there, and I haven't cleaned it yet. It's an interesting piece. So in the comments, let me know what you think. Also, you can see there's a brass sleeve or a brass bearing here, and I don't think I want to press it out. I'm wondering if I can just press on the shaft itself. And that shaft there with the groove in it, I believe, is all one piece and part of this. So that's how I want to go about it, I believe. And uh, I just want uh, some confirmation with a few of you out there. One man said he rebuilt several of these, so he, he's been a good resource, and I, I had a lot of good answers. 
I will put at the end of the video some more stills of the patent drawing and all of that, which I think a lot of you found very interesting, and that's just in case there's some new viewers, but I doubt there'll be many new viewers on this. It'll be the same people answering again. Again, I will probably not answer the comments. It just takes so terribly long. Also, be it noted that apparently there are several different versions of this. I believe this is one of the older ones, but as people showed me different pictures of these, and there were some that were for sale on eBay that I looked at the pictures of, and there were different versions of it. Most of them were stamped pool gear right here with the, the ratio, because these came in two different ratios, and maybe a patent number, but there is no marking on this at all. And I will have to drill a new hole here. I'll probably drill it on the other side because that's all broken out. This one has been uh, handled by uh, hammer and chisel mechanics. Looking at this now, I've got a vice grips on that little shaft in question. And when I pulled this back, you can see it's been peened over. It's not threaded. So I can probably just cut that off. Although that will, I'm sure, render the little shaft too short but that's I'm, the first thing I'm going to do unless I find out something other from viewers and then secondly I intend to push right here I don't think that my uh, one and a half ton dake is up to it it probably will take a hydraulic press so I gotta find somebody around here that has a hydraulic press but this bearing here is real bad real bad and I suppose the one up in here is as well. There apparently wasn't any way to lubricate these other than to drip oil in here, which I think was really meant for the gears, but since there wasn't much oil in there, or debris, I'm assuming that it probably was lacking oil, but if it was, the gears sure are in good condition, so I don't think there's any problem with the gears. I just want to get it apart and change the bearings. Many people discouraged me, as it is their want to do, saying these things aren't any good anyway. Because when you gear them down, let's say you're going to drill a three-quarter inch hole, the first thing that's going to happen now that we have plenty of torque is that we're going to have the belt slip. And they're probably right. But that might have been why these were also available in a B-size pulley. These are A's. And if it was in a B pulley, there would be only two of them rather than the three. That would, of course, give more surface area for the belts and, uh, and more friction and maybe less likelihood of, of uh, belt slippage. And I was kind of surprised to find that this was a brass gear. All right, thank you for watching this temporary video, and several people admonished me and said, don't take these videos off because they are interesting, but they're not meant to be permanent videos. I don't even have titles on them, as you can see. I just qu quickly load them and put them on YouTube without the usual effort that I go through. But I like mechanisms. I know you guys do or you wouldn't be watching this video, so stand by and take a look at some of these uh, patent drawings if you haven't already reviewed them. Now there was one man that uh, sent me the patent drawing and he had used a highlighter and it was very evident then what uh, what pieces needed to be pressed out. It just uh, was, a, was a great idea to highlight it like he did and so I thank you people that, that helped me and uh, some of the comments were very very long. Go back and look at that other video if you feel like it, read some of the comments because it's, it's pretty good and there's some pretty clever uh, men out there including engineers.